Hello and welcome back to another episode of my series which I'm pretty sure has a creative and innovative name but I can't just put my finger on it. Anyways, what am I going to talk about in today's episode? Well, it will be the chance condition. I already did a tutorial on this in the past but the quality was subpar and I did not explain everything just the way I should have done which I will try to fulfill now. So if anything is still unclear, just mention that in the comments and I can explain you that in further detail. Uh, this tutorial will be split in several parts, which I thought would make well sense. So if you could understand one part, you could move on to the next one. And uh, that's why it should be easier to learn. What I will start to talk about is just the chance condition in general. How does it work? What is it? Because there's the first tricky part about it. So if I go to triggers, uh, the most uh, objectives were just uh, bring object to area, for example. I choose my area, I choose my object and then I'll just let this trigger be there, be active and it'll do nothing until the object is there in the area and then it will trigger. If you do the same thing to uh, to chance condition triggers, you will run into a problem because the way of the chance condition How this chance condition works here? So basically it works the same way as any other trigger would do as well But the nature of it being a chance trigger is Conflicting with the normal usage of triggers across uh, quotation marks So what does this mean in detail? Whenever you want to use the chance condition, you need to first activate. In this case, um, I just use this easy, uh, simple bring object to area trigger. And uh, then this trigger activates all the other spawn triggers. And those have a chance, each one. And uh, except the last one, it will explain this later on as well. And um, not only they got activated, but spawn timer and spawn stop as well. So the timer just activates them again and again. And the stop, well, deactivates the timer. Relatively easy as that. The important part about this is as soon as the trigger or well, the chance gets triggered, it deactivates itself again. And if the first one does not trigger, but the second one triggers, it will also deactivate the first one. Because otherwise, it would just go on and go on and go on. And basically, in 100% of the cases, the chance would be met because at some point, if, for example, if you got a 10% probability that something will happen and then you test it infinite times, at some point it will trigger. So you need to make sure to deactivate the trigger um, as soon as you tested the chance and then terminate it again. Because otherwise it will just run and run and run until the condition is met and um, this way actually it is not random but it's... 100% true. And this is not what we want to have. We just want sometimes things to happen and sometimes not. So I hope I could get this across now. The next thing I will talk about you to you is how to do the ratio. This trigger, as you probably could tell already, is supposed to spawn units and it should do so at a relatively even ratio but not 100% of course since it is random so now we take our hero move him over there as this was the condition and now units start to spawn and now a specific pattern but as you can see they have not identical numbers, but very similar numbers. If I would do this again and again, then um, on the long run, I would have 
more or less the exact same amount of throwing X-Men, Berserks and Shokunu. So how can we achieve something like this? And this is where the interesting part comes in, because, well, you would expect uh, it's 33% chance, because I want to have in every third case, this should be, uh, this condition should be met. But actually, it is something different here. And this is uh, because we're not running all three of those at the same time. It's uh, the first thing. And the second thing is, well, this also implies that we just f do the first trigger, then the second, and then the third, because that's just the way the editor works. You can't do multiple things at once, but you'll do them one after the other in a quick succession. So at point two here is that we want, so basically we want to have every unit a 33% to, to spawn, but we don't want to have the case that no unit spawns at all. So it's one out of three, but at least one. So how do we do this? In this case, it, um, well, we just start with, uh, start spawns, of course. Then we do the first trigger here. It has a 33% chance. So far, so good. This was what we expected. We'll go over to the second one. This one actually has a 50% chance. And this is because we already had the one third chance of the, well, 100% basically went away. So now we still got two possible outcomes because one of them already, in this case, did not happen. And then if we still have two out of three options left, we would like to have them 50 50. So this is why we have 50% a chance on the Chocono. And on the Thorin X-Men, well, here we have no chance at all. Because since we know when we reach this, this trigger, the Berserk has not spawned. The Chokunu has not spawned either. So it needs to be a Thorin X-Men because we don't want no units to spawn at all. Okay. And, um, yeah, I think I got, should uh, have explained this relatively sensible. And now I will show you some more ideas, what you, how you can use the chance trigger. They are very, very basic, and I'm sure you can build on this system a lot more sophisticated ways how to utilize it. Uh, well, go for it, surprise me, but uh, for now I'll just so something I used in my one of my scenarios in a more complex way, admittedly. In the uh, Hannibal Crossing of the Alps scenario, Hannibal Barker, I had randomized, uh, randomized map generation, sort of, because there were multiple ways to get across the Alps and some were always blocked by rocks. But this has to mean that I have to avoid the possibility that all are blocked because I always need one way to walk across the map. So I used something similar to the triggers before. So here is a delete rock one. It deletes those rocks here. The chance of 50%. And when they are removed, I deactivate the trigger delete rock two. This means if this trigger does not trigger right away, I'll test the second one because we always go from the top to the bottom. Each trigger is viewed separately. Uh, well, one after the other. And then we have rock two. And this drill, well, it just removes these rocks. And um, as you probably can tell, this trigger does not deactivate delete rock run because this happens all this happens uh, in chance stop because this trigger just deactivates all the randomly generated map, sorry, random generation uh, triggers mentioned above. Now we have some variation in what kind of units we will face here. So you can do it the hard way 
I just used the easy way as you can have a chance trigger which spawns units but it's just a lot easier to place all the units on the map already and then just on map generation have them removed so in this case I can either have the men at arms removed or have the Tarkins removed or both so there's a lot of different setups this map can have and here is the chemistry upgrade so player 2 can start with chemistry but doesn't have to do this and uh, this is a way to add variation and add player replayability to your scenarios okay just so let's spawn in here. So this time we got seven throwing X Men, four uh, for Chukunu and four Berserks. Okay. So you can use this of course to keep the, the map fair but different. So if you do just generate uh, randomly generate the units um, and that sometimes play has a lot of units, sometimes he has uh, barely any at all, then it would be yeah it would sometimes feel unfair. So the trick about chance condition really is that you make it different but not uh, harder or easier, but just more interesting to play this way. So the goal is replayability and not frustration. Okay, and here, as you can see, we got amended arms. The boy has stayed, of course. Uh, no tokens and no chemistry. Also, the northern path path was open instead of the southern one. Here, in this case, it doesn't really make any difference at all, apart from the optical, ed, of course. But yeah. This is just for demonstration purposes anyways. Alright, and now we'll just turn these guys off. And declare this as a victory. There we go. So, I hope today that uh, you learned enough uh, information uh, so that you can use the chance condition in your own scenarios. As I already mentioned in the beginning, if you still have any questions about how to use this, if certain things would work, if they would not work, then, well, just feel free to ask. Uh, I'd be happy if I could help you with those questions and if you have any uh, cool new use of this and uh, would like to share this just post post, uh, post it below the video and I can can take a look at it if it's a really creative idea maybe even um, do an own video about that scenario okay but for now well I'll just call it a day I'd like to thank you a lot for watching and uh, supporting me here and uh, wish you a great day. This has been Alkalim. Goodbye. See you on the next one.